Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Now we are going to start lecture number 26. And in this lecture, we will uh, discuss the recursion and the string operations. Now before going to start lecture number 26, we will review what we did in lecture number 25. In this lecture, uh, in lecture number 25, we discuss uh, the uh, stack parameters. How uh, In lecture number 25, we implemented the stack parameters and other operations uh, inside the advanced procedures and we implemented them in assembly language. Now in lecture number 25 as you know that we uh, implemented invoke directive procedures uh, procedure directive along with the parameters so we just wrote the uh, name of the procedure and also uh, the procedure directive and comma with the parameter and with the colon sign and type of the parameter and comma and so on uh, we can define these parameters on multiple lines but their comma should be there so we can transfer them or we can move these parameters on the multiple lines we also use the proto directive this proto directive was used above the code segment or code area um, if you want to use invoke directive and then we must have to define the prototype of this procedure so that we can directly pass parameters uh, by using the invoke directive because we cannot pass parameters by using call uh, when we use the procedure uh, if we use call you cannot pass parameters however if you want to pass parameters by using call then we have to uh, separately push all these parameters however in this invoke directive they will automatically be transferred then we also implemented uh, the parameter passing by values and by references then we did some examples for exchange uh, add to rfl and so on so these examples like how we can add two parameters or two values whatsoever and store their values into eax and how can we assign any value and fill inside the array and so on then how can we explicitly access the uh, stack parameters by using the ebp or the base pointer or frame pointer so we can use them by using either adding or subtracting so ebp uh, plus the value uh, plus 8 or plus 12 whatsoever depends on the type uh, we use 8 for double word for example if we have the word type then we use 6 if it is byte type then we use like 5 and so on so it depends on the type we can add to access these parameters and so on and we saw that parameter passing by argument and references in lecture number 25 now we are going to discuss the topic following topics in this lecture which include the uh, recursion this recursion is very important topic then in this lecture we will discuss what is recursion and we will use recursive calculating a sum so how can we recursively calculate the sum and then calculating a factorial and so on then uh, we will discuss about the string primitive instructions like move sb move sw and so on then compare sb and compare sw and all these instruction store and so on and load instructions about these strings and the some string procedures like string length, string copy, string trim, string uppercase and so on. There is also a string compare all these procedures. So all these topics we will discuss during this lecture. Now the first topic that we will discuss is recursion. So what is recursion? So when a procedure calls itself then the process is started. Uh, this is called recursion when a procedure calls itself inside because we know that we have created procedures so when we create any procedure for example its name is a b c or something and there's the end of the procedure a procedure this is procedure and p so here inside this body when a procedure calls itself uh, when we call abc or something the procedure so actually we are calling this one before return we are calling the same procedure or the procedure is calling itself 
it's called the recursion so it is calling again and again itself and there should be some termination condition that when this procedure is just terminated itself so for example there's another case when recursion occurs is this case here you can see this graph when a procedure a calls procedure b which in turn call procedure a or this is the way like procedure a calls procedure b and procedure b calls procedure c c calls the procedure d and d calls e and e again calls the a so in this way using a graph uh, which each node uh, where this each node is you know, represents or resembles a procedure and each edge here this is a call so for example all these are the calls so when procedure A calls B and B calls C and so on and when procedure E calls so this is called the uh, uh, recursion cycle so this recursion process is created when we call a, when a procedure call itself or when a procedure calls another procedure and this the second procedure calls the first procedure and so on so this is a loop and there should be some termination condition when we terminate this uh, uh, procedure calling or recursion otherwise it will indefinitely call itself and there will be a stack overflow or other errors that will occur so here we are going to discuss uh, the recursively calculating a sum so there is a procedure the name of this procedure is calculate sum procedure it recurs recursively calculates the sum of an array of integers so for example recursive like ECX is the count and return the EAX as a sum so how many times we want to recursively cal uh, call this procedure so ECX has the uh, the value uh, which will calculate the uh, which will recursively call this procedure uh, in this procedure you can check calculate sum is a procedure and here we are comparing so ECX has the value this has the value to recursively call this procedure or procedure itself for example its value is for example 10 so ECX the value 10 so if we compare if if they are equal for example if they are equal if the counter is equal to 0 for example then we will jump to L2 we will exit so this is called the termination condition this whole is called the termination condition there should be one termination condition otherwise this procedure if there is no um, this um, recursion uh, this no condition then there will be not no termination at all so it will recursively call so this is termination condition in all recursions or recursive procedures or functions there should be a some termination condition so ECX will be compared with zero if is equal to zero or not if it is equal to 0 then we will return back otherwise we will add ECX uh, with the EAX and then we will decrement ECX and then we call sum again so we are calling the same procedure again when we are calling the same procedure again we are comparing uh, the ECX so we have decremented ECX and we are again going to compare with the 0 so this process will calculate the sum for example if ECX is equal to 10 then it will uh, calculate the EAX will be equal to 10 then 10 will be added with 9 then it will be added with 10 and so on until it is equal to 0 when this will become to so when we add 1 for example after that ECX will be equal to 0 so when it will be 1 and when ECX is equal to 0 then we are actually returning back from this this procedure so now how this recursion will occur so you can see in the next slide here so for example we push on a stack the L1 or the value of the uh, you can ECX is equal 5 initially and EX is equal 0 initially when we call this one so this is the uh, label 1 or uh, from where from the main program when we are calling this one so this is the return address of the main program the next instruction inside the main program when we are calling this calculate some procedure so initially when we are calling this one uh, this calculate some program then ECX we are passing the e setting the value for ECX is equal 5 and EX is equal 0 
what will happen? It will compare ECX with zero. If it is not equal to zero, then what will happen? It will add EX and ECX. So, and then it will decrement ECX and then it will call it again. So when we are calling again, so L2 or the level two, for example, or we can say the level two. So it, we are calling this one again. So this is the return address, our return address of L2, whatsoever the return address is. It is being, next instruction is being stored in, on the stack. And when we are calling again, definitely ECX now new value is five and EX has the value, of, uh, sorry, ECX has the value four and EX has the value five. And again, we are starting this whole procedure. We compare ECX, is it zero? No, it's not equal to zero. So what we do, we add ECX with EX and decrement ECX and so on. And we call this sum again. So when we call, then L2's address again will be stored back on the stack. And when we are calling this one again, uh, the third time, from the procedure itself, the value of ECX, we know that it was three, and value of EAX will be nine, and so on. So similarly, this process will continue. When the ECX is equal to zero, and when we are calling this procedure, so now this one, uh, ECX is equal to zero, so this condition will be true, and we are actually returning back. So stack will, uh, we were reading this instruction L2, and return back to the previous uh, uh, in, uh, procedure call, and in previous pro procedure call again we are going we have stored the same address, so we will return back to the same address and same address and same address and same address and so on, and until unless we we return back to the main program. So in this way, the final value for the EAX will be 15, and we will return to the next instruction uh, where our program, uh, this procedure was called. So in this way, recursive uh, sum will be calculated. So this is one way you can see here. So this is the main program where we say that ECX is equal to 10, EX is equal to 0. And now we are going to call this array sum. Also, uh, we are going to call this calculate sum. Now L1, when we are calling this one, then the address which is represented by L1 is being stored on the stack. So I can write it here. So L1 is being stored. So when the when we use the return instruction, then return instruction will uh, return to this L1. However, when we are calling this one, what will happen? We already set the value of ECX here. So we know that when we are calling, uh, then ECX is equal to five and EAX is equal to zero. However, in this procedure, what we call uh, ECX is compared the same one uh, with this zero and so on. It will not jump because ECX value is greater than, uh, sorry, here the value for ECX is equal to 10. So if ECX is not equal to zero, then what will happen? We, we are going to perform this aid operation. And before performing, after performing this aid operation, we are calling this one. So when we call this procedure, definitely the next instruction, the return, inst the next instruction here, similarly here, when we call this procedure, the next instructions address, whatsoever the next instructions address is, it will be stored inside the stack. Similarly, when we are calling this procedure, so next instruction inside the procedure, whatsoever the instruction is, its address will be stored. So L2, where the L2 is, uh, L2's uh, address will be stored here. Similarly, whatsoever the number of times you are going to call this procedure, the value of uh, the address of this L2 will be stored here. And until and unless when it will become zero, then what will happen? It will return back to this, uh, for example, this is the 10th recursive call then what will happen here, the, we are going to actually return back. So when we return back, we will get the value of L2. L2, so after this L2, uh, when we are executing the instruction at L2, that is instruction is again the return instruction. So what this return instruction do, it will retrieve the previous instruction which we stored inside the uh, stack. So it will retrieve all the instruction until unless it will come to the L1 and when it will come to L1 then program will start its execution from here. So this is 
one way you can uh, this is the way you can uh, use the uh, recursion inside the assembly language for example this is another example this function uh, is called the factorial function so for example if we say 3 factorial actually it is 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 similarly so if it is for example 0 factorial so it should be 1 this is uh, uh, this is one check so we have to continue uh, this process until n is equal to 0 4. so if it is n is equal to 0 then it will return 1 so this is the factorial function in C++ or C. This function will return the total value. So when we are calling this, uh, this up to this one, we are executing this function. However, at this point, we are calling this function. At this point, we are calling this function again and again. So this is the termination condition. If n is equal to 1, uh, sorry, n is equal to 0, it will return 1. So when it will return 1, then these values are being again extracted from the uh, stack and being multiplied and being replaced here at this point. So this function calculates the factorial of integer n and a new value of n is saved on the stack frame and so on. So all these values which are being saved on the stack, they will be replaced at this point. Now if you want to see this one, how does this function will work? I can show you so I can just raise this area because here we will show the so here we will show so each call instance and each call instance returns the product is turns it is multiplied so whatsoever the factor value it will be multiplied by its previous value in the previous value of n so if you want to see here so this is recursive calls, for example, if you are calling 5 factorial, so 5 multiplied by 4. So actually, we are calling 5, so value, return value should be uh, 5 here. And again, we are calling n minus 1. So this will be stored again inside the stack. And then we are actually calling the uh, this one, uh, 4 factorial multiply, means 4 multiplied by 3. And we are calling this one. So in 5, we are calling 4, fact four factorial in 4 we are calling 3 factorial and so on if it is 0 factorial this is the condition if it is 0 what will happen it will return value 1 so this one return value will be multiplied with the previous value whatsoever the previous value was here it will be multiplied here and then whatsoever the result is it will be returned back here and in the previous call it will be multiplied and whatsoever the result was that this call was it will be multiplied or sent back to the previous call and so on so the calculation will be done in this way so when we are calling so it one is equal to one so it will return one so one multiply by one one multiply by two and two multiply by three and whatsoever the result is it will be here transferred here here so all these values whatsoever the result is it is being transferred here I can show this direction also so this function has returned value 1 and then what's of the result is it will be sent back here and the final value will be 120 and something whatsoever now here you can see here the factorial function we have the EBP and what we are going to do here uh, we are going to so whatsoever the factorial value is we will push this factorial value inside the before calling the, this factorial function so we push value for example 5 or something whatsoever the value is being pushed so this EBP uh, is going to point out as we have learned in our previous lecture so this is uh, parameter passing by value or the uh, parameter uh, argument passing by I can write it here the argument passing by reference or the by values argument passing by value so first we push 5 and now we call this we call this factorial inside our main program so what will happen first we push this value 5 and then definitely 5 will be stored first then we will have the return address then we will have EBP we push EBP and then EBP is assigned the value of the 
uh, stack pointer. So now EBP is used to access this value. So EAX is the uh, register which will calculate the factorial. Uh, the result will be inside the EAX. So initial value, whatsoever the value you are going to push, for example 5, it will be assigned into the EAX. And then next what will happen when we call this, uh, when we compare, if, uh, if we compare this one with the EAX, if EAX is above then 0 then we jump to L to L1 otherwise what will happen EX will be assigned value uh, 1 so it will recursively so here what we are going to decrement we are going to decrement EAX and push EAX so here when we are in at this point definitely EX is equal to 5 it is e greater than 0 so we jump here we decrement EAX and we push inside the stack and we call factorial again when we call factorial again what will happen what will happen it will again push all these parameters inside the stack and EBP will be pushed again so I, I will show you the main program or the, uh, the pictorial gram so again all these parameters are being stored inside the, along with the previous parameters so stack is growing so when we return back what will happen if EAX is uh, if EAX is equal to 0 so we are assigning EAX is equal to 1 and then we are jump to we are going to jump to L2 here so this is the point where we jump to the L2 so it will for example in case if it is equal to the uh, if it is not equal or less than so it will be jump to L2 so we are going to call factorial and here when we return so when we are going to uh, return this one here you can see here initially for example n is equal to uh, 12 we are calling this one so first we push 12 then this is the return address to the main program and we are calling uh, this is the EBP value in, in the first call so in this first call we can access this 12 uh, by using the EBP plus 8 and so on and then we are calling this again inside the main program so inside the main program what will happen this all these three parameters will be saved again because we explicitly push the EAX decremented value and so on so we want to calculate the factor of 12 the diagram shows the first few stack frames so this stack grows until we reach that EAX is equal to uh, 0 so this each recursive call uses 12 bytes of each space 4 bytes, 4 bytes, and these 4 bytes. These 12 bytes are being used in each recursive call. So when we return back, what will happen? It will substitute all the values of EAX and it will perform the multiplication as you can see in our previous slide. Here is the uh, move EBX, this one, because we are again coming back and then we perform multiplication whatsoever the value of EAX will be so EAX in the final one it EAX will be equal to 1 and we are going to perform this one so actually here is the, here is the jump L2 here so we just do pop EBP and return 4 so this return 4 is we are subtracting uh, we are adding ESP plus 4 this ESP plus 4 is so that we can remove all these values whatsoever when we return from here for example so a stake point will come here when we return from here then a stake point will come at this point here and so on so we are substituting uh, again retrieving all those values and and put them inside the EBP and perform multiplication and in the end whatsoever the value of EAX will be that will be the multiplication now this was all about the recursion, how you can use recursion in the, in the assembly language and how you can define the recursive procedures. So this was all about the advanced procedures. Now we are going to move towards the chapter number 9 inside the uh, book. Uh, you will see then in the name of the book and references. So there are string primitive instructions like move sb, move sw and move sd and so on. Then compare. Um, a string byte, a string word, a string uh, double word and so on. 
so these instructions are related with the string strings how we can manipulate all those strings now we will see what is the purpose of each of all these instructions what is the purpose and for what purpose we can use them first is the move sp move sw or move sd so these instructions move a string byte and this word and this double word instruction they copy data from memory location pointed out by the esi to the memory location pointed out by the EDI. So, for example, we have the um, two string arrays, source and target array. Both are, for example, this is double word and its values are like this one. Here you can see the source is double word size and target is double word also. But we want to move whatsoever the data is there, double word data to the uh, double word in the target however how can we move if we have the location of the source and if the source location is moved inside the ESI so now ESI is pointing to the source from where we can perform uh, the shift uh, transfer of this byte word or double word information and so on so ESI is the source and EDI is the destination so what we do if we write move SD so it will move the double word from the source or the ESI, whatsoever the, wheresoever the ESI is pointing to the EDI. So all these eight, uh, the four, four bytes, they will be transferred. So this is one byte, two bytes, three and four bytes. These four bytes will be transferred to the uh, area which is being pointed out by the uh, location inside the memory which is pointed out by the EDI. Now ESI and EDI, they are automatically incremented or decremented, depends. Now is the move SB is incremented or decremented by 1 or 2 or 4, depends on the direction. So here is the direction flag, uh, DF. If it is clear, then increment ESI and EDI. Increment means we are going to move in the forward direction, means ESI is value or address is for example ESI is pointing to the 0 x f 0 0 0 for example then ESI will be incremented by 1 if we are using the move SB and so on if direction flags flag is set to 0 then what will happen or oh, sorry if, if it is set or if it is equal to 1 then ESI and EDI both will be decremented or we will move in the reverse direction so here you can see the uh, there is one way or uh, these are the two instructions so the direction flag can explicitly change using the clear direction or set direction instruction uh, so clear direction flag or set direction flag these two instructions are used to clear or set the direction flag here you can see we can use repeat uh, how we can use repeat in in previous instruction you saw that we only perform uh, we have the ESI and EDI so we perform move from the uh, ESI to EDI. So whatsoever the ESI is pointing, we just move either byte, word, or double word data from ESI to the, from the location where ESI is pointing to the EDI and so on. However, we can use repeat directive or repeat prefix uh, repeat prefix uh, can be used instead of just uh, instead just before this uh, move SB and move SW or move SD and so on so now what will happen here so this ECX must have the value so ECX must have the value that how many times we are going to repeat so the number of repetitions must be stored in, the, uh, in this ECX. Now in this instruction or in this example, we are going to copy 20 double words from source to the target. So source 20 should be in, inside the ECX, source should be inside the ESI and EDI must have the target. So for example, we have source, we have double word 
and there are 20 duplicates. So we have the array. So we have the array. Now incrementing and decrementing base, if you use SB, increment will be, there will be one increment in the ESIR EDA, two increments and the increment by four. It depends as we saw in our previous slide. And the target is 20 duplicates. So if you want to define something here, if you want to define values, you can define values here. So for example, here if you want to define values like 1, 2, whatsoever the values you want to define, or if you want to define any other values, you can define here. What we want to, we want to clear destination flag. So now uh, df is equal to 0. It means we are moving in forward direction. So ESI and EDI will be incremented automatically in the forward direction. So incrementation increment will be either 1 byte, 2 bytes or 4 bytes depends either we are using the uh, move SD so in, in case of SD it will be 4 bytes movement. Now for example if I show you the example here we just erase this one So here you can see uh, if we 0, 0, 0 x f100 0, 0 is the address where this value 1 value is stored for example and the next value is 2 this is stored at uh, all these are same values f104 uh, so 0 1 2 3 they are 4 bytes f1040 x f104 is pointing here and then the third value is for example this value is 4 so f0 x f108 and so on so all these are the values and for example these are the locations we don't know what is the value for example here which is pointed out uh, which is not assigned here and it has the 0 f 0 x f200 zero zero and so on now both of them they will be incremented and how many times we are going to repeat we are going to repeat whatsoever the length is so for example if the length is 20 then we are we want to repeat them 20 times however the source length for example source has a length so length of as we know this one will return as the value this value will be 20 so 20 is assigned to the ECX now what we are going to do we need the starting address or address of the source and address of the offset as I told you address of the source should be saved in ESI and address of the target should be saved in the EDI now what we are going to do here we use repeat directive and move SD so it will repeat 20 times and in, it will increment by 4 if we use SD so what does it do it will copy from here double word from here to this address uh, to this area 2 will be copied from here to this area 4 will be copied from here so whatsoever the number of values 20 double words you are defining they will be copied from this array to the, the next array and so on and the incrementing increment will be based on the move SDR, SBR, SW, so on. So this is the, uh, if you want to move the all the word, double word or byte uh, from one array, from one array to another array or from one memory location to another memory location and so on. So this is the drill for example. We have an array. Its value is like 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. These are the values. So we want to use move SD. So for example, this is double word. We want to move as use move SD to delete the first element. So we want to delete this element, and then uh, element of the following double word array. All the subsequent values must be moved one position forward towards the beginning of this array. So this one will be moved here. Two will be moved here. Three will be moved here. So new values should be one, two, three. 4 up to uh, 10 should be here and this 10 will remain at this point. So we are moving the, all these elements in this direction. 
like the bending of the array so how we can do that one how we can do that one first of all we have we must know the the source now source address for example our array starts so this is the source from where we are moving so actually we are moving from here to here so EDI must point to the array itself the starting point and ESI must point to the array plus 4 why because this will be used as a source from here we were using source so we are transferring information from here to here from here to here so they will be automatically incrementing so ESI is pointing to the next location and EDI the destination index so it is pointing to the first in, uh, index of the array so it will perform uh, move uh, all these values so move we are addresses are moving in this positive direction so we are accessing elements in positive direction so first we have to clear the destination flag and then what we have to do how many times we can repeat repetition is more important so how many times we are going to repeat if we are going to repeat the length then whatsoever the value of the uh, at the next address is here after double word value is it will be moved here so either you want to repeat the length of or you, you want to repeat repeat the length length of minus one length of array and minus one so one less than the length so actually we are moving all these values uh, values from uh, the second element to the tenth element uh, second element uh, to the tenth element and so on so there are total 11th uh, 11 elements so it means we have to move all these elements so this this is the example so here as I told you so ECX has the counter so length of array minus one so it has the value of ECX is assigned the value here so it will be 10 for example because there are one two three uh, there are total 11 elements so now we are going to uh, move one less than the total length into the ECX now here you can see ESI is a source address our source pointer from where we are want to move double word so array offset of array n plus 4 means this one and EDI is here EDI is pointing to this first value and ESI is pointing this one so we are moving this one so this one will be moved here then they will be incremented by 4 then what will happen ESI will point here and EDI will point here so it will move two towards the EDI and so on so EDI is the offset the starting address of the array and so on so we are going to repeat move SD so we are going to move double word what will happen it will move all the elements of this array of ND now from the first element will be overwritten and the next element will be will come to the first element and so on up to the second last element will move to the the last element move to the second last now there's another one is the compare SB compare SW and compare SD instruction these instructions they each compare memory operands pointed by the ESI and the to a memory operand pointed by the EDI so now we are going to compare either bytes either words or double words now we have the um, previously we used the move now we are going to use the compare now how we can use this move uh, uh, this compare to compare these uh, bytes words and double words the same thing happens here so ESI is the source with which we are going to compare the destination so we are going to compare either bytes words so there is a repeat prefix repeat prefix will be used so either we can use repeat equal or repeat zero so it will repeat until they are equal repeat not equal or not zero these are the prefixes that you are using that we will use uh, along with this compare SB and so repeat equal or repeat Z compare SB or SD 
R, S, W and so on. So we can use either repeat equal, either we can use repeat Z or we can use uh, the repeat not equal, uh, not equal or N, Z so on. So it will start comparing on these words or double words or bytes until they are equal, until they are not equal or until um, um, they are we can say until the, it is zero or until not zero so when they are equal the zero flag will be set uh, if they are not equal then uh, zero flag will be reset and so on so now here you can see we are going to compare the pair of double words compare a pair of double words here is the double word one and double word two for example so we want to compare them how we can compare source if the source is greater than target, the codes jump to L2, uh, sorry L1. So this is L1. Here you can, uh, for at L1 you can write something if you want to type any message or something. Uh, this message is that source is greater than target and so on. If you want to print and so on. Uh, at L2, you can write the source is less than or target is greater than source and or greater than or equal to source and so on. So here, we can jump to A or jump to uh, jump when they are uh, the above or jump when to L2 when it's below. Uh, simple jump here. So here you can see. ESI has the offset of the source and EDI has the offset of the target. Now we are using the compare SD. So compare the double word. So what will happen? Jump above. If we use jump above means if um, ESI, ESI are the source has the higher value or greater value than the EDI, then we will jump toward the next location or the L to L1 where you can print some message. Otherwise, we can jump to L2 and we can print that either the target is greater than or equal to the source and so on. This is one of the simplest one. Now, we can modify this program in the previous slide and we declare both source and target as a, as a word and make any other necessary changes if you want to make them and you can uh, modify that one. Now, here is the comparing the array, arrays. Now, inside an array, you can see this is a double word and these are double words and count for example here there should be count count is the number for example count is, is double word or word whatsoever or double word 10 so this is the number of duplication how many times you are going to duplicate and if you assign some value, values here you can assign any values here and you want to compare them so ECX must have the count, ECX must have the count and it will repeat itself. So what will happen here, so ESI must have the source, EDI must have the offset of the target and then we clear direction, so we are moving in the forward direction. We will repeat until they are equal. So we are comparing the double word, we will repeat until their values are equal and we'll repeat how many times we will repeat the count times count number of times so th it will show you if count is equal to 10 so all these 10 values will be compared but how many times we can repeat it depends depends on this value so for example count is equal to 10 we are going to compare 10 times however it will re repeat maximum 10 times but maximum 10 times until and unless they are equal if they are not equal it will return back now these are this is one another another way uh, if you want to compare the string now one thing previous in the previous um, examples we were using only the values now we were not using any string but now we want to use them in strings, uh, how we can use all these compare and the move and so on inside these strings. So here you can see the difference is a string variables are of type byte 
and this is one two three four five and six bytes and so on so six bytes and this one is the source is six byte one two three four five six seven and eight bytes so now we are going to these are the two arrays of bytes because string variables are nothing but the arrays of byte type byte so what we are going to do we are going to write a program that compares two strings source and destination it displays a message indicating whether the lexical value of the source string is less than the destination string or not so source is smaller this will be displayed or the source is not smaller so either source is smaller than destination or not so this is a program when you when you compare these two definitely source will be smaller so we are comparing m a r t they are equal i n so e is not equal to this one so there's no value for e and z so source is smaller this will be the output when you print on the screen how it will be printed on the screen first what we will do we will clear the uh, direction flag now source has the value uh, source is a string array array of bytes it's moved to the ESI destination is the uh, area of bytes is moved to the EDI and length of source so we are going to is inside the ECX so we repeat we repeat uh, the SB our byte comparison and then we will repeat until they are equal so for example what we do uh, jump to the source smaller this is the label so source smaller label jump below this is jump below when we and you can see in the previous example here there is a there's one space here we use multiple spaces to make them of the equal size so what we will so dumb uh, we will jump when below so smaller it will jump here otherwise edx is the offset of the string 2 so we will uh, edx will be pointed out to the offset of a string 2 and we will jump to the uh, this one done so edx is is the uh, register which will uh, print out this message so here right string is the the message that will be printed here so instead of using this one we can use also the std out uh, these are this is the right string is the uh, procedure which has been defined inside the uh, book so instead of using this one you can use the std out and the uh, here you can write the invoke std out comma address of a string a string 2 or here you can write the move however if you move here then we have to jump from here to the uh, exit and so on so you can print any of this string if you use this one so either you print here an exit to done or exit to uh, at this point or not so actually the main thing is here at this point here so we compare repeat until they are equal so we will repeat all this one if this is below for example if there there is no value here in the source and there is some value inside the destination we will compare both if the source is uh, below than the the uh, the destination byte then what will happen it will jump here to the source smaller otherwise it will compare all of them it will repeat comparison if it is below for example if the values are, are inside the jump byte are inside the source byte is below than the destination then it will jump to the um, to move this invoke std out and string one and so on that source is smaller otherwise it will print the uh, source is not smaller and so on so this is the example for example uh, source before this one so ESI is pointing here EDI is pointing here so uh, the source and destination these are the two variables now here you can easily understand what will happen here before that one ESI is pointing to the starting byte EDI is pointing the starting byte of the destination and source and so on 
So they will compare. They will compare both. When it will come here and here, it will say that this one is below than this one is below than this one. So the condition for the below will be true or it will print the string and so on. So this is one of the example you can use that one. However, here you can see modify the string comparison program from the previous two slides and prompt the user for both the um, source and destination strings. So you can use invoke and std in and then you can use the address of something address of the source or destination and so on so you can receive these two strings and then you can use the compare and so on so this was the about the uh, comparison move and comparison and so on now you can see there as as sc asb and sc so these instructions what they do they will compare a value inside the al ax or ex either byte or word or double word respectively addressed by the edi so now what will happen here source a is compared with the byte or a word or double word is, um, with the al ax or eax if we use sb uh, s um, the source a sb or source a sw and so on so if you use sw then ax will be compared with the edi otherwise if you use sd then uh, the eax will be compared with the, the edi and so on so this will compare whatsoever the value you use inside the either al ax or eax now what will happen here this will search for either if you want to search for a specific element inside a long string or an array so you can use this type of uh, instructions so search um, for the first element uh, that does not match with the given value so either you can use in both either you want to search for the first element in the string as long as, as the first element matches otherwise you want to use for the first element that does not match with the values of both these directions for example if we want to search letter f in a string alpha for example so alpha is in a string here is, is is this is of type byte so how long we can search so we know that this is the null terminated string and this is the uh, it will search until and unless we have the uh, either we want to search uh, for the complete one or the first matching or until the first does not match and so on so here you can see uh, we are going to assign edi with the alpha offset of alpha al has the value of f now we ecx is the length of alpha so we are using repeat not equal to repeat until uh, while not equal so it will repeat itself until uh, f is not equal to these bytes when f is equal to byte it will uh, stop so when f is not equal it will continue when f is equal to that byte it will stop so what will happen jump not zero so it will jump to the to this area and it will quit otherwise so edi decrement edi so we are going to decrement edi because uh, it will compare so edi has the value of the offset now for example e we are going to write here the f 0 0 0 0 1 0 2 0 3 0 4 0 5 and so on first value is a b c d e f and so on so what we are going to do here, uh, we are going to, EDI is pointing out this one. So F000, all this one. So what we say, AL has the value F. So ECX will continue. So we are comparing in the, we are selecting the direction. This is the forward direction. In the forward direction, we are comparing all these values. 
So repeat not equal. Until and unless it is not equal, you have to repeat. So if it is not equal to AL is not equal to this one, then it will increment the EDI. Compare with the next one, it will increment again. It will increment and it will increment. And when EDI is pointing to this address or here, then what we can say is uh, this will be equal. So at this time they are equal. Then what will happen? If it will complete all these, then it will be equal to zero. Otherwise, if it is not equal to zero, then it will quit. It will quit or it will jump to somewhere else. If it has found, then it will not perform jump. And what will happen? It will come here. So we decrement EDI. So we decrement EDI because when we'll uh, move from here, then uh, this EDI will point to the F. So we will decrement EDI. So why we we jump not equal to zero? Because if they are not equal to zero, if if we found, then zero flag will be high. Otherwise, um, zero flag will be low, and so on. So the question is why we use JNZ function instruction here. What is the purpose of JNZ instruction? So you can search inside the book why we use JNZ. And this one is the store SB, store SW, and store SD, and so on. So what we are going to do, uh, this instruction stores the contents of AL, AX, or EX respectively in the memory at the offset pointed out by the EDI. For example, if we want to fill the array with FF this value and we want to store this value inside these addresses, how we can do that one? The easiest way, previously, previously you saw the, the examples of fill array where we have defined a complete whole procedure. However, the same operation can be performed here. So AL has the value that you want to fill. So count is, for example, 100. It shows that there are 100 elements of type byte. And EDI is pointing the address of this, this array. Now we are going to uh, move the ECX because ECX must show the count, the count or how many times we want to repeat. So what would say repeat? Store as beam. Repeat. Uh, we are not using the repeat equal or so. Repeat equal or they are equal. They are being used when we are using the comparison. Otherwise, here we are using only repeat. That repeat store SB. So it SB byte. This this is the byte value inside the AL. So the byte value will be stored inside the uh, EDI or wheresoever the EDI is pointing. And it will increment EDI up to these number of counts and it will fill whole array with the value f, f, and so on. So again, we have the uh, load sb and S, um, sw. So load a byte or a word from memory. So previously, you have seen that store. Now we are going to use the load. So it will load the byte word or double word pointed out at memory, at this, which is pointed out by the ESI into either AL, AX, or EX respectively. So now if you want to point uh, load whatsoever, if you want to traverse whole complete array and load these bytes or double words or words from an array or from somewhere in the memory location. So you can use this one, the load SB, load SW or load SD. It's very simple. ESI is the source index of this array. So index of this array has been stored in ESI, starting address. Length of array is in the counter, clear the direction, load SB. So we are going to load SB, we are going to load only one byte. We are going to load only one byte. Then what we are going to do, we are going to perform R. We are going to perform R and 30H. So we are going to convert this into the ASCII, um, ASCII characters or ASCII values. So whatsoever here is 1, it will be converted to the ASCII value. 
so it will be again stored inside the AL and if you want to print this character this is the predefined or you want to print by using the um, std out and so on you want to print this one if you want so this loop will continue until the ECX is equal to 0 ECX is equal to 0 so it will loop will continue for ECX times here you can see initially when we move this byte into the AL so AL will be 1 and ECX was equal to uh, up to 9 so 2 4 6 8 and so ECX is equal to 9 in the next iteration ECX will be equal to 8 and the second byte so because uh, e ESI will be incremented automatically so in the next one AL will be equal to 2 and it will be converted to the SK and so on so in this way you can repeat it nine times and it will move the byte from the which is pointed out by ESI and in, into the AL in case if it is a word then what will happen we will use here load SW uh, load SW in case if it is double word then we will use load SD and so on and so the array or the ESI will be incremented accordingly 2 bytes or 4 bytes and so on so in this slide what we are going to discuss here is we want to multiply all the elements of array with some value so multiplier is uh, we have the array and it is of type double word and multiplier is a variable its value is equal to 10 we are going to set the direction uh, in the forward direction so we are actually clearing the destination flag and ESI has the uh, offset value of an array EDI is equal to ESI so what we are going to do the same elements are being used same elements are the same destination index is also being pointed out by the uh, EDI and so on so we have the source index and the destination index is also similar one so source index is ESI and the destination index is also similar one what we are going to do is ECX is the total length so now this loop will continue this loop will continue up to ECX times because we are using the loop instruction here load SD so it will load the um, double word into the EAX now we are going to multiply now we are going to multiply the uh, the multiplier the value of multiplier 10 multiply with this one and we are, whatsoever the result is I, EDX and the EAX combination or EAX only so it will be stored at the EDI because EDI is also pointing to the same memory location so it will store at the same memory location it will be like 10 and it will be 20 and so on so it will repeat itself so for example EAX so this multiplier result will not exit from the EAX so the multiplication is still inside the EAX so what we are going to do we are going to store the double word from the EAX into the EDI so when we load ESI will be incremented when we store EDI will be incremented with the same amount so actually what we are going to do here we are source is also incremented and we are loading the, this value multiplying and we are incrementing or loading into the or storing inside the EDI and so on so what will happen it will traverse all the elements inside the array it will multiply with the 10 and it will aid or it will store the result into the same array and so on so here you can see uh, write a program this is a drill question write a program that converts each unpacked binary coded BCD uh, byte belonging to an array into the ASCII decimal byte and copies it into the new array and so on so this is the value it must be converted in three BCD or the binary coded decimal or ASCII decimal byte this is ASCII decimal byte and copies into an ASCII decimal so this is the BCD value so it should be converted into the mm, ASCII value and copied inside this one 
So here, ESI, EDI, so source is in the ESI, destination in the EDI, and ECX is the length, direction is the forward direction. So if you are with 30 hexadecimal, you, this one will be converted to the S key value of 1. So it will be converted into the S key. And the same one is, so only this operation will change. If you recall the S key table, if you just go through the S key table, so this one, or uh, this one, three, one, in hexadecimal is for the one. If you just recall, if you can show here. So if you just see here, you can see uh, the this is the BCD value, one, and is is equal to the these are the three bits, so it is equal to three, and this one byte, total byte is like. 0, 3, or uh, this is 3 and 1. So 31 hexadecimal is, is representing, uh, so 31 hexadecimal represents the SK value for 1 and 3, 0 shows the 0 hexadecimal. Here you can see for the value for the 0. So these are the upper, uh, the most significant bits like B7, B6, B5 and so on and these are the least significant bits and so on. So at this point what we have to do, we have to just R these elements or these element values with this whatsoever in the AL is. So we just R with the 30H. It will convert them into the hexadecimal byte and it will write into this new, into this new array and so on. Now these are the selected string procedures here you can see. Uh, these are the string procedures you, uh, you can find in Arvin 32 or Arvin 16. These are the libraries in, inside the book uh, like a string length, a string copy, a string str trim and uppercase and so on. So we will go through all these procedures. You can see all these procedures, what, how these procedures perform. So what is a string length? and string copy and so on. So what is string length and string copy and so on? How, did, how does this procedure perform? So inside the book there are two libraries which you, which you can include. They have these procedures. But you can create your own library and you can you have your own uh, procedures for all this purpose. A string length is a procedure that calculates the length of the null terminated string and returns the length in EAX procedure. So here this string has only one parameter, is pointer to the string array or pointer to the byte array. And inside this array, what should be? So for example, if we want to uh, call this string, so what we, how we, how we can call this string? Invoke str length. So this is the uh, str length is the name of the procedure. This is our procedure that we are going to create and we will pass the uh, parameter by reference or address of the string and this is actual procedure. So this procedure uses EDI only and it has the parameter uh, reference parameter uh, parameter that is called the pointer to that array. Now what we are going to do here EDI because we are using comparison and EAX has the value 0 for example. So EDI and EAX, EAX has the value 0 because we are trying to uh, find out zero from the null terminator. So we, what we do, we compare byte pointer, whatsoever the value is at the EDI with the zero. Either it's the end of the string or not. So, so this EAX has the value, the counter value. Not the counter, is the count. Um, so EAX will have the value for the uh, characters, character count what will happen here uh, until and unless we do not found, find zero inside this EDI it will increment the EAX and so on. So if they are equal it will jump to L2. L2 means exit from the program otherwise it will increment EDI and increment in the EAX. So EDI is the initial starting address of the string or string byte uh, uh, string array. So a string array has the values and the last element is the zero. So we are going to compare. So initially we are starting from here and this is pointed out by the EDI. 
So this is pointed out by the EGI. So we compare byte pointer in the EGI with zero. If they are equal, we terminate. If they are not equal, then what we do? We increment EDI. So we compare with the next one. As long as we are going to increment uh, the EDI, we are also increment EX. So we are going to count the number of characters. When we, so we jump here. Uh, this is unconditional jump. We jump to L1 and compare again and again and until and unless we do not find the zero. So until and unless we find zero, the EAX will have the value of the number of characters. So in this way, you can find the number of characters or length of this whole string. On the other hand, there is another one is called the str copy. So copy is a null, null terminated string. So a string must have the zero at the end from a source location to the target location. So we have this prototype. In this prototype, you can see we have the source, uh, a string source, and the string destination. These are two byte arrays. How we can do that one? So this one is using EAX, ECX, ESI, and EDI. So source and target, they are pointer of type byte. We have the, we already created this one to find the length. So if we have the length, it will be inside the EAX. This one we have already created in the previous slide, as if you recall. So EAX will have the length. And this is the repeat count because now we are using this uh, move SB. So we are moving the bytes from uh, one location to the another location or source location. So source location is ESI and EDI is the dark target location. So we are going to repeat how many times? We are going to repeat ECX times. We are going to repeat ECX times. And we increment ECX here. Why? Because there is also zero. Because when we are we define this procedure, we are not counting zero or null termination. So zero must be transferred to the new location. So it should be the null terminated one. So now we are going to repeat and move SB. So these bytes from the ESI will be transferred to the so here source address will be moved to the ESI. This one will be moved to the EDI and so on. So now we are using the move SB. You can see we are using move SB. And it will move all the elements from the ESI to the EDI. Trim. This trim is uh, procedure removes all the occurrences of selected trailing characters from the null terminated string. So we are removing the occurrences of all the uh, characters which are similar to the character which we are going to locate. For example, we have a string. And we want to trim all the characters, remove all these characters which match with this byte or with this character, for example. So it means we must have the string array or the array of bytes. And we must have also the character byte which we want to remove from the string. So this one points to the string. And here we have the character that we want to remove. For example, if we have uh, a string or the character array, it is null terminated here. And the we are going to call this procedure invoke as trim, str trim address of this array. And this is the this is the character that we want to remove from our string and so on. So how you can perform? You can uh, use this procedure to check a number of possible cases shown here with dollar. Uh, this uh, ampersand, uh, this sign, uh, this hash sign as a trailing character. For example, we have to check either the string is empty or not. A string contains other characters followed by one or more trailing characters. Tick. And then we have to check the string contains only one characters of the trailing. So how many characters of the trailing are there? A string contains no trailing character at all, for example. And this string contains one or more trailing characters followed by one or more non-trailing characters. So this may be the case. It means we cannot, we do not trim this one. We have to trim this area and so on. So we have to check all these conditions. So we have, we are using EAX, ECX, and EDI. So source and the, so these will be used as source and destination and so on. So what we are going to do, we have the one pointer to the uh, a string. And we have the byte. 
these are the two values that are being provided are passed these are two arguments that will be passed and these two parameters will be used so EDI has a string we can use the length to come uh, so EAX has the length if EAX is equal to 0 if it is empty string then we can jump to L2 so return back this is the first condition if yes then exit then move ECX comma EAX number of so number counter is equal to the length of the string so ECX has the value so we are decrementing EAX or oh, one EAX is decremented here now EDI is equal to the so EDI points to the last character here so now EDI is pointing to the last character so we are going to add EDI with the EAX where what we are going to do this is the uh, we know that EAX has the total number of characters uh, and decrementing one and EDI is pointing to the first and we are going to add EDI with the EX now EDI is pointing to the last character because EDI here has the a starting address when we add the length minus one so it will point to the last character so move AL with the character so character to trim we want to trim the character which character we want to trim whatsoever the character we want to trim is move to the AL so set destination we are setting the uh, destination flag in equal to one what will happen we are starting from the reverse direction repeat until equal so we are going to say uh, skip the uh, these characters uh, skip character as the byte and what will happen we will skip all those characters if they are not equal we jump to the L1 otherwise we will decrease so adjust EDI so zero flag and ECX flag if they are equal to one uh, and ECX will be equal to one and we will adjust this ESI now in this way we can so what we will do byte pointer EDI plus two is equal to zero so insert the null byte at the end of this EDI and so on so that it will uh, be the new a string will be the null terminated string so what in this procedure what we are going to do we are going to convert uh, these characters into the uppercase for example in S key A or for this character A the difference is that if we have seven bytes of S key 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 three four five and six so this byte is uh, is zero when we whatsoever the value is here this byte is zero and for a in small this byte is one so if you want to make find the difference uh, convert a small a into the capital A we have to reset this byte only we have to reset this byte only uh, sorry this bit only and it will give you the S key or the capital so what we want to do we want to convert this hello into its capital so we will just pass only address of this string and it will convert it in the in the capital hello so now this one is using ESI and EAX so we have the pointer to the string so we have the pointer to the string and we move, move uh, this pointer to the ESI now what we do AL is the character so we move the character first character whatsoever this pointed by is into the AL compare AL with 0 is end of the string or not if it is end of jump if they are equal we move to the L3 we exit from the program if it is the end of the string compare AL if AL is below for example below this AL is we just go to the L2 so because below this A and above the Z so what we are going to do here is we compare AL with A so if value of AL is above uh, sorry if is the below A below A means S key value of A is here and if the value of A uh, value of AL is less than the S key value so it means we have another character whatsoever the character is we do not do anything 
or in case if we have another condition that if it is above z or the value sk value is above z we will not do anything so we need values in between a and z sk values in between a and z so if the value is in between a and z we have to convert this bit uh, to zero it will convert them into the uh, similar character in the capital one so all these wheresoever the esi is pointing we want to convert that byte into this uh, by performing AND operation and again the value will be stored at the ESI. In case if there is another value we just simply increment and we jump to the L1. So if we, we just compare uh, here again and we just move to the next character and so on. If the AL is equal to 0 means if the string is terminated we will exit from this program. So now we are going to summarize. In this lecture, we discuss about some advanced procedures. We discuss recursion. That what is recursion? Recursion is when a procedure call itself, or when a procedure call itself, or when a procedure one A is calling procedure B, and again procedure B is calling procedure A. So this is repeated to process. Then we saw the uh, recursive calculating a sum. Then factorial. Uh, example then we saw the factorial example now in the factorial example we have recursively calculated the factorial like 4 factorial 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 and so on and there should be some null mean termination condition to terminate the uh, this repetition or this recursion then we have used all these move as be uh, compare uh, and then store and load and all these instructions then we have created all these procedures by using the above instructions um, the str length str copy str trim str uppercase and so on so we have created this procedure by using the previous instructions and we saw that uh, these procedures can be used uh, these are the these are not the predefined procedures we have created by ourselves you can create procedure once and you can include in your library and you can use them again and again. So these were some topics uh, related about the advanced procedures and some strings. So this is end of this lecture and inshallah hope to see you in the next lecture. Till the next lecture, Allah Hafiz.